Hello, and yeah, you guessed it, we're going to talk about crampons. Let's dive in. So as with a lot of things with skiing and mountaineering, there is not one do-it-all crampon to do everything that you need. <sighs> Let's talk about why I think you should have at least two pairs of crampons. So before we get stuck in, yes, this video is going to feature only pets or crampons. There's two reasons for that. One, it's my favourite crampon. I've been using pets or crampons for the last however many years now, and I really love them. I really like the fact that you can change the toe and the heel pieces around. You can kind of... You can buy just small spare parts for them. They're pretty universal crampons, and I just think that they work really well. The second reason is that some of these crampons were given to me by Petzl. Yes, this is a, I guess, sponsored video. So before we get kind of into different models and all that kind of stuff, let's just talk about some anatomy of crampons. So at the front here, we have the front point. And then behind that, you might have some secondary points which kind of sit just just back from that main front point these might be interchangeable they might be fixed these front points normally there's a little allen key here so you can undo this long bolt and there's a series of spaces in between here and you can pull this out uh, put a new one in we've got some the secondary row of teeth back here and then you have another set of points that maybe even face slightly backwards each front part of the crampon is different on different models and the reason is you know some might be better for ice climbing and some might be better for snow climbing but generally they'll have maybe three or four sets of points at the front then we have some kind of attachment system that will fit over your boot again on these pets ones i love it you can change between this type and then a plastic bale we'll have a look more about that later the next feature to talk about is the rubber pad that sits in the middle of the points that's called the anti-balling plate and it's very very useful i wouldn't recommend that anybody has any crampons that don't have some kind of anti-balling plate some crampons have a very small toe piece and you don't get so bad balling but if you can find a pair of crampons that have an anti-balling plate you should definitely have those if you've got older crampons that don't have anti-balling plates i'd probably suggest it's time to either get a new pair of crampons or think about how you can make a pair out of i don't know a plastic bottle or some duct tape or something like that it's a really important safety feature of crampons it stops snow from sticking in uh, between all the points and creating this big ball of snow that you can then slip off on. Moving back from there, we have a bar that on the Petzl ones, I really like it because they have two sets of holes and you can really dial in the length of the crampon that, like that. Some bars are flexible and those are designed more for kind of walking crampons. These stiffer bars are definitely more for climbing or mountaineering. Coming back here, we have this silver piece, which is the adjustment system for the crampon. So this lifts up like this, and then you can slide the crampon. You can slide to make the adjustment, and then it snaps back down like that. Uh, and so that's how we're going to get the length of the crampon between the front here and these two turrets at the back of the heel piece. On the heel piece itself, we normally have four points, sometimes more, but... Normally it's just four points at the back. And then we have the back strap. Um, this clips onto the welt of uh, the back of the boot. And then we have a strap here. And this is really important to keep the, the crampon on our feet should it kind of get twisted or torqued off our foot. We're not gonna lose it. These two parts here, the, the wire bale and the plastic bale at the back should hold it onto your foot. This is really just to stop you from losing the crampon. Again, at the back, it should have an anti-balling plate and there will also be maybe some kind of adjustment on, on here to move the height of this uh, up and down so it gets a nice snug fit on the boot. Here, this, this is how you adjust the Petzl crampons. There's three holes here, so you move it back and forward, and this gives you the tension here on the back of the boot. We'll talk a little bit about fitting these and how to get a perfect fit a little bit later in the video. So this is called the Petzl Dart. This is really designed for ice climbing and mixed climbing in mind. Uh, it's got interchangeable front points, and I really like climbing ice with these, and I really like mixed climbing these crampons. So yeah, really good tool for the job, and it's nice that you can now swap and change these uh, these front points out because before they used to just sell it as a single piece and if you wore the front point down um, from doing lots of mixed climbing you would have to basically 
uh, replace the whole front part rather than just this point. So looking at a very different type of crampon, and this is the crampon that I probably use most of the time during the winter. This is the crampon that I'll be doing ski mountaineering with. I might even do some summer alpine climbing with it as well. Um, this is the Irvis Hybrid. It has a steel front part. I've actually done a review video on these, which has done really well. So have a check out of that um, for a bit more of in-depth. But here we have a string system that holds those crampons together. And the really nice thing about that is you can fold the crampons to make them into a much smaller package. Now what I've done with these very recently is I've on a, uh, a follower or a subscriber's recommendation in another video was to change this strap out for this style of strap. You can buy this. I bought this from Snell Sports in Chamonix. It was 15 euros um, for this other strap. And it basically, uh, I find that it's it's much easier to get around uh, a boot. So could be a really nice uh, small upgrade if you've already got a set of crampons like these to upgrade it to this kind of elasticated strap rather than having to buckle it back through each time. With these crampons, they have an aluminium back. As I'll show you later, those wear out very, very quickly if you're gonna use them on any rock. So I really wouldn't recommend using these on rock at all. This crampon, um, because of the string, I always carry a spare string with me in my repair kit. Another top tip for these is, you see here the adjustment system um, at the back here, uh, in, the, in the heel piece is when this string starts to wear out here, which inevitably it will with this design, um, then you can shift the hooks around to move the worn part kind of in and out of this, this front part of the binding. And I find that that, that really helps to, uh, to make them last a little bit longer. You can also use this Irvis uh, front part with the flexible bar and have a a kind of steel back part and that's a really good crampon in itself and that could be a lot better solution for some people as a ski mountaineering crampon that also can work a little bit better during the summer. So 10 point crampon which is a little bit different design from some of the heavier mountaineering crampons that we're going to talk about in a little bit but yeah two front points that are flat these are more designed for use use on snow than on ice really nice crampon i've had a, quite a few pairs of these and i have actually ended up wearing them out because i've been naughty and used them a lot more in the summer than i should have done so this is the petzl sarkin and this is more of a general mountaineering crampon i would say it has 12 points so two uh four six eight ten 12 and it also has these small subsidiary points just behind there so you could almost say that it's a 14 point crampon these have worn down quite a lot i don't have a good example of what a new one looks like but maybe you can see here these points are, are quite dull because they've been used walking around on a uh, rock in the summer why do you walk around on rock in summer with crampons well you know inevitably there's going to be roots or things that you're doing where it's snow and a little bit of rock and snow again and you're not going to be taking the crampons on and off the whole time so having a good solid mountaineering crampon like this for use in the summer is really important and that goes back to why we need two pairs of crampons maybe you need a light pair for ski mountaineering during the winter and then maybe you need a heavier pair for general mountaineering in the summer maybe you want something which is more focused on ice climbing and then something that's more focused on general mountaineering so Having a couple of pairs of crampons, I think, is really important if you're going to do lots of mountain sports year round. These general mountaineering crampons, you can make them much shorter by hooking the bar into this other hook here. So that's really useful for people who've got particularly small feet. On here, we have the plastic uh, bale, and this is quite a nice uh, setup for kind of a general summer mountaineering boot where you maybe have a plastic heel welt at the back, but you don't have anything at the front. Uh, it's just uh, the boot. This is going to fit over and actually I generally always use this setup in the summer and one of the reasons for that is um, a client might break their crampon and I find that this is a much more universal system to fit onto their boot if I'd rather have them in a fresh pair of crampons and me with just one or with a broken crampon for example. But what I would say about this plastic type uh, binding is it doesn't fit very well on ski boots at all. That's why you would always use the metal bale for ski boots. Again, for ice climbing, you would always use the metal bale and a boot that has a proper welt around the toe. And the reason for that is you're going to get a much better bite when you kick that crampon into hard ice. 
These do tend to have a little bit more flex than the metal bar, so you're inevitably going to lose a little bit of power when you're kicking hard ice. The Sarkin has serrated teeth at the front here, so it's very similar to the Vasak, which is the other crampon that I use throughout the summer as well. One top tip that I found uh, is really helping a lot of my clients and friends out with is leaving the buckle always buckled up like this. If you have to buckle this buckle every time you put the crampon on and off, A, you're losing a lot of time, but also you're losing a lot of energy. It's really quite stressful to kind of bend over and, and buckle that on the outside of your foot. So leaving it buckled up like this so you can just step in and then tighten that strap up is a really nice thing to do. I have seen some people changing the strap around so the buckle is on, is on the inside of their foot. Now, I probably personally wouldn't recommend doing that because as you're walking, there's a high chance that you're going to um, open those buckles a little bit as your, as your feet kind of slide next to each other. You have to have a lot of discipline to keep your feet apart and not do that. Um, so, and also it's just a little extra thing that's going to kind of knock together and maybe, you know, maybe even trip over on. So it's nice to have a nice, smooth, clean strap on the inside. Something I didn't talk about before is there are a left and a right with crampons. There's always a bit of a curve in the bar. So this would be for the right foot. And if it was to bend the other way, it would be for the left foot. So one other system here for really strapping the, the crampon on is having a full plastic back and plastic front. Now that means that you could strap these crampons on to kind of a, a boot that doesn't have a, any kind of welt on it. So a softer, a softer boot for mountaineering, this could be a really good system. You can see here how much I've worn these, these points down um, just from, from using them walking on rock. And what I would say is that's definitely uh, too short now. You're not going to get any grip on hard ice. It's a cat interlude. Oh. Oh. Getting, getting comfy. Majestic. So now let's look at fitting these crampons and let's start with a ski boot with the Petzl Urbis Hybrid. What I would recommend with these is again a metal bar at the front and make sure that that's sitting nicely around the lip of the, the ski boot that you have. Now at the back we're going to use a plastic clip that's going to sit across that, uh, that ledge where the ski uh, binding might fit. Now what we're looking for is a nice solid, kind of difficult to get on uh, clip. Uh, like click at the back of the heel. It really has to be kind of nice and tight so you can you can hear that kind of solid clunk. And at the back here where these two kind of turrets are that sit against the back of the boot here, these need to be right up against the back of the boot. There shouldn't be any gap whatsoever uh, in there. So you really need to make sure that the string is tight enough and that there's no kind of flex in the string that you've got enough tension in there um, that it's not going to bag around. The first time you use them that maybe the string stretches just the tiniest amount and then you have to just make them that one little bit shorter. And again to really adjust the the uh, the tension on this this clip here we have to move this part here this this metal part forward in these holes or backwards depending whether we need it to be tighter or looser but you really need that good uh, clip and as I said, I've already changed the strap on this to a a clip. So this is going to come round like that and just clip on the outside. And I think that that's a really neat system for these crampons. So again, yeah, this is how it would fit onto a mountaineering boot. You need to really make sure that the heel is up up against there. If we need to adjust the length, we would use the bar. We lift up the little metal part that's uh that's sitting in underneath there. So you have to really take the crampon on and off to get the right length. So it's definitely better doing this at home before you're meeting your friend uh, to go ice climbing or before you meet the guide to go out on your adventure. Is try and get this uh, set up before you head out there. This obviously should be nice and tight and then this strap just sits around like this and I've tightened it up here. And what I probably do with this strap is I just tuck it inside the gaiter of this boot uh, and then my, my pant leg is going to be over the top like that. And I find that, that that system works most of the time to stop it from kind of flapping around. Uh, you could wrap it around uh, this strap around the front as well. But yeah, generally, nice, neat package. And you don't have anything on the top of your foot there as well, which is a really nice thing um, for mixed climbing. So moving on to a more kind of summer alpine fitting, we've got this uh, plastic bale here. 
um, on this on this boot and what I would say is on the front of here we also have an adjustment for this wire part so you've got two settings there and that really will adjust the length of the front points so sometimes you want slightly longer front points for example if you're doing uh, a snow climb and then if you're doing a mixed climb you want slightly shorter front points in Scotland sometimes when they're doing like pure rock mix climbing uh, they want just really short stubby points so think about the point length at the front and if you can adjust it to what you're doing and then the strap for this it's really important that it goes around and then through this plastic part and what I've done here is I've just tidied the excess strap up by doing a whole bunch of half hitches around itself back on the outside of your foot you wouldn't want to do that on the inside because that could be something that you could potentially get a point snagged on I could have maybe tighten this up a little bit more um, it's hard to do when it's not on your foot but yeah one thing with softer boots sometimes you can over tension this strap and you get a lot of pressure on your heel so just be aware of that make sure you haven't over tightened the heel so you're going to be getting blisters at the back of your foot again same kind of adjustment with moving the bar setting the right points there and then setting the, where the, the heel piece is some manufacturers have different uh, systems some have a bit of a wheel that you can turn at the back here to move this up and down for example um, so yeah try and figure out how it works I'm currently getting my feet attacked by a giant cat so that's the three most common uh, ways to fit crampons to boots uh, there is the obviously the, the strap-on system as well, uh, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you've hit that subscribe button. That's really going to help me to grow this channel more. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.